G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're covering a topic in Grasshopper. So I'm going to show you how to build a script that can ex essentially extrapolate a whole bunch of screenshots of shadow studies. So what you'll be able to do is in one button press, you'll be able to achieve something that looks a little bit like this. So a range of images named for the time of day and time of year that you tell them to be. So it'll be a single day of the year and a range of times. Um, so we're going to be using a package that's actually been demonstrated on YouTube in an older form. So there is a tutorial called Shadow Study Demo on YouTube, which is where I found this package in an older form. But if you're using Rhino 6, you'll need to use a newer package called PCPA. Um, so this package is actually available on Fib for Rhino. Um, and we're going to be focusing on just a few tools in the package today to achieve this. So you'll need to focus on these tools once you've installed it, um, specifically this analysis period and the shadow animation tool and also the registration tool because if you read the fine print on food for rhino um, you actually need to fill out a form uh, in order to get a registration key um, that you use to id your session essentially so when you're in a grasshopper script using this package you just need to connect the authentication node um, up to a key uh, which you put in a panel so obviously i'm not putting mine in there because it's a, a personal key you receive um, and then you essentially just press run um, on a button once you're in the script just to activate it once which will activate all the other components as well so today i'm going to be using rhino 6 um, but without further ado uh, we'll just jump straight in so essentially we're going to be setting up something a little bit like this that can export a whole bunch of images from a rhino file so what I can do here is actually just um, export these images and we'll get different times of day and different shadow angles as a result. So what I've got here is just a Rhino model. Um, and I've just changed the graphic settings just a little bit. So under here, I've activated the rendered view. And in the render settings, uh, the main thing you'll want to check is your sun settings. So under lighting in this tab here, if you go to sun settings, and just cross check the uh, the time of year and also your location and daylight saving times as well. So I've just told it that I'm in Sydney, Australia, um, which is good enough for a basic shadow study. So let's just jump into Grasshopper. So I've got just the, the start of the script here. So there you go, you can see the four, four, first four letters of my registration key. If, um, if you wanna guess the other 16 or so, go for it. Um, so it's gonna be under a panel uh, called Reach Campus. Uh, which is PCPA um, underscore GH essentially. So this is that registration component. If you need to use it, you can just click and drag it on and then just connect those up. But essentially once you've got the script open, you just run it once and it just tells you that a web query took, fly, took place um, and then you can just set it back to false. That's why a button is so good because it's only true once for a short while. Okay, so let's just um, actually drag in some nodes and get started. So a goal it's going to be this node and it's, it's asking for a few things it's asking for a folder path the size of the viewport and also uh, the timestamps or the times of day or or year so most of the script is going to be building these actually and you can see by default this comes in uh, getting flattened as part of the node's default settings um, you'll note that there's no way to run this node so what happens is you actually right click it and you dump into the folder as part of the node's behavior which is great so what we'll do is just get a file path and just tell these images where they're going to be saved to. So I'll right click it, select one uh, directory, and we'll just navigate to where I've located. I've just made a test folder in this case. So that's our first input covered. Obviously the, the easiest one is out of the way. So what we're going to do now is set up our sun vectors instead as part of the same package. So what this asks for is a month range, an hour range, a day and a time step or a minute step. So each of these is essentially expecting a domain so we've got month, hour, day, and minute. So what we're gonna do is establish um, two domains. So there's a few ways you can do this, but the easiest way is to just construct a domain. So I'll just go construct domain. You can also use concatenate on strings um, in a, uh, as an alternative, um, but I find this a bit easier. So what I'll do is just get a slider. So I'll just put in We'll go from um, month first, so that'll be obviously from 1 to 12. So I'll just go for uh, June 22nd by default. So 1 to 12, and that should create a number slider. Really handy syntax. Um, what you can do is just right click this and just go month, just to make it really obvious to the user what they're picking. Okay, 
Um, so in this case, uh, our domain, we'll just say that we only have one month. We don't have a month range. But that should construct a domain. So now you can feed that into your month range. And then we can create an hour range or actually we'll do the day next. The day is quite easy. So we'll just go from one to 30 to 31. By default, we'll just make it during 22nd because that's the winter solstice in Sydney. So it's the most common day that we take shadow studies on because it's when the shadows are at their worst, essentially. Or the, the, it's where we want to test the maximum impact that a building would have on its environment because the sun is at its lowest. Okay, so we'll just make this a uh, day. Just make this a bit smaller as well. Feed that into our day. And now we need an hour range. This one we actually will use a proper domain with two ends. So we're gonna create uh, from one to 23 and I'll just go for nine o'clock first. Uh, I'm noting we're using 24 hour time, obviously. So this will be our start hour. And I'll just copy this for my end hour just to construct a proper domain. And I will call this end and I'll place its value to 15 or three o'clock. That's a pretty typical testing period for, for Sydney, where I am, and a lot of other places as well. Okay, so we're just gonna construct this domain as well. So now we should have nine to 15 as our hour range. And you can see already we've got our sun vectors ready as soon as we feed these in, but we can also specify a minute step. So for 60 minutes, it's on the hour, 30 minutes, it's every half hour, and 15, uh, it's every quarter. If you hover over this, it gives you a little bit of information. So it recommends working in increments of five, 10, 15, 20, 30. Um, obviously not picking silly numbers like 7.342. Um, I think it is still possible, um, but I wouldn't pick an illogical number, put it that way. So what we'll do is we're just gonna create a value list. I really like value lists. I find them really, really handy. Um, so essentially a value list lets you pick a whole bunch of inputs um, under a tab called edit, where you can say what the input is called, but in the background, you can say what the input is actually going to feed through. So what we'll do is say hour hourly equals 60, half hourly equals 30, and quarter hourly equals 15. But on the surface, all the user sees is these three options. So it's a really handy input method um, that saves a lot of visual real estate when a user's looking at it. So we'll just feed that into our minutes step. Um, and essentially we can just check our list count, or oh, sorry, our list length, just to see how many vectors we're getting based on this. So if we just check our sun vectors and we just get a panel, you can see currently we have seven, which is what we'd expect because we're going from nine till three. If we go on the half hour, you can see we end up with 13, quarter hour, 25. So it's making sense the amount of things that we're seeing based on the number of hours that we're testing. Um, so that's good. So we can pretty much validate that we're getting the right number of vectors, which we're gonna feed in as timestamps from this timestamp output. So essentially we have timestamps and we have a folder path, um, but at this point I actually got quite stumped when I first built the script. So I'll just connect my folder path. I'll just make this a, a faint wire as well. Um, but what I had to do here was get the size of the runner viewport. Um, obviously you can go in and go and check uh, your render size settings and just manually type in these two numbers. Uh, but I found a better way using C Sharp. Uh, so I don't actually code in C Sharp myself. I did actually have to find a script online, uh, but I'll show you how to write that script now. Um, so what you're gonna do is search for C Sharp and we'll just get rid of the X input and we'll just call this, uh, we'll call this VP for viewport. And if you right click on it, you can give it a type hint. And what we're gonna do is tell it it should be a string. That way at least it tells the user what it expects it to be. Because in this case, this is gonna be a viewport that the user can feed in. And we're gonna create a default condition that if you don't feed in a viewport, it gets the active viewport instead. So usually that will be sufficient. So we're gonna get the width the height, noting I'm adding my zoomable user interface components here by just clicking on the plus. And we'll also get uh, the view name as well, just because that's what the script I found was showing people how to do. So what we're gonna do is edit the source now. So we're jumping into C Sharp. So 
Immediately it's quite uncomfortable compared to Grasshopper because this is proper coding. Um, but one great thing about setting that type hint and also some of those variables is that up the top, it basically establishes that line for you in the gray area. So you don't have to do anything um, in terms of establishing your variables that you can work with. So that's great. So what we'll do now is actually start looking at the C -sharp script. So if you just click in this line and just insert tab twice, we're going to define a variable called view. And we're going to define this as run a doc active document views and it's going to search for the viewport you feed in called vp or that variable that we specify as our input um, i haven't checked yet what the false statement is achieving here um, so if anyone knows feel free to put it in the comments um, but i couldn't find out what the syntax was expecting with a false but add it anyway because that's what the script specifies from there we're going to create an if statement and this is where we're going to catch if uh, our view is equal to null. So if we don't feed in a viewport, obviously that will be a null. So this will basically hit a true in this case because we haven't provided the viewport. We'll go back, put in a curly brace, and then in our inset function or our if statement, we'll say that if it is true, we'll get rhino doc active document and views and we'll get the active view instead. Um, you could just not have an input. You could just say it's always the active view. Um, I guess the person that showed me this script online was trying to make this a, a flexible C-sharp function. So it had more than one use. Um, what we'll do is just say enter, step back and close our if statement. And then we'll just start setting some of our variables. So view at this point is either the viewport that's been fed in as a view or it's the active view. So in this case, it's the active view. So we're going to say the width is view and we're going to get uh, the active viewport settings and we're going to get the bounds and the width. So this will essentially output the width of the active viewport currently. We'll do the same, but we'll do for H or height. And don't forget to put a, a semicolon at the end of each line to close the statement. And finally, we'll do a view and we'll make that V and we'll make that the active viewport, but we'll make it the name. And essentially at this point, um, that's the end of the function. It should work. So we can run the script. Okay, that and our function will work. So at the moment, we're not feeding in a viewport. You can see we're getting 1471, 896 and perspective as the name of our viewport. So that's just a simple little C-sharp function. And in order to establish the size of your viewport, um, you can actually use the construct point tool in order to establish a X and a Y component for this size. Because if you hover over this, it's expecting an X and a Y and ignoring the Z essentially. So we're just going to construct a point. And this will be the X or the width times the height or the Y. And we'll just feed this in as our size. And at this point, we essentially have a function ready to go. Um, if you're going to package the script for your users, I recommend you push these over just a little bit and just hover over all of these and group. And these can be your inputs. Just so your users know where to function uh, when, they're, when they're setting up the script. Um, you could also, if, if you have bifocals, you can always set certain elements not to show up. So I have a little tool called bifocals up here, which essentially is why all my tools have a name above them. If you right click this and set multiple text, we can take away file path. And then we can also take away value list. And if I commit the changes, you'll note that the file path now loses that, as does the value list. So it sort of neatens up the function a little bit. Um, you can obviously hide wires if they're getting in the way for, uh, as well. Um, but I think this is probably okay. This gets the job done. So we're pretty much ready to run our function now. So if I just go back to these folders and I go to this folder called test. And I'll just go back and set my value list to hourly. And I right click on this and dump. There you go. It's just created all those shadow studies for me. And it's animated them 
across the day. So that's how easy it is to set up this script, um, but also get a viewport that is sized based on the active viewport properties as well. And obviously you can set this to quarterly as well, or half hour, and it's really quick. Um, obviously the larger your model, the longer it will take, um, but I'm finding it's usually quite efficient uh, to run. But there you go. It's done all the quarterly hours as well throughout the day. And with enough of these, you can almost create an animation of how the sun crosses your site on a particular day. And you can see that it's named them based on the time as well. So it's got the, the month, day, year, and the time um, with hours, minutes, and seconds. So really easy to set up um, and really intuitive. But I thought it was good to share this because this, I couldn't find a tutorial out there for how this new version works, only the old one. So it took me a while to figure this out and also to find this C-sharp script. So hopefully that's a handy tool for you um, in your feasibility studies. Um, so thanks for watching today. If you've got any feedback or comments, feel free to leave it down below. Um, I look forward to sharing more Grasshopper content on my channel, um, as well as other Dynamo content and Revit as well. Um, so I upload videos about two to three times a week. So if you're not already following, following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks, take care.